Hi, it's Connie from Prosperity Finance. I hope you are keeping safe and well. Now, recently, uh, we were all going through the lockdown period. Um, as a business owner myself, well, there's a huge pressure uh, financially and emotionally. Now, government already doing a lot of uh, work uh, to help us uh, getting through this period, uh, including the wage subsidy. Now, there's another really big overhead cost, which is commercial lease. In the news article talking about some commercial tenants already uh, stopped paying uh, the lease, but there's really no, no black and white answer uh, if we can stop or reduce the lease payments. Um, so there's a lot of confusion. So today, I'm quite lucky uh, to invite a really senior uh, solicitor in the business commercial. Her name is Dre Yuan. Now, Dre is a senior solicitor at Turner Hopkins. Um, she's not only doing property convincing, her specialty also includes uh, commercial lease um, and business um, purchase, etc. So today I invite Joy to give us uh, some advice in terms of if you are tenants, uh, commercial tenants or landlord, what should you do with a commercial lease? Hello, Connie. Thank you for the invite. It's our pleasure to come and get some talk around the commercial lease area. Great, thank you, Jay. So, um, as mentioned, uh, there's a lot of uh, commercial tenants um, trying to get better relief uh, from the lease payment, um, but there's a lot of rumor. So, can you please give us some expert advice? Yeah, sure, Connie. It's a really good question and it's really a um, hot topic at the moment. We receive a lot of inquiries from the landlord as well as tenants ask us to provide a legal opinion on. Um, what should they do with their rent? Can they stop paying the rent to the landlord? Or is the landlord asking us, tenants asking them to, you know, to for rent abatement or rent reduction, what can they do? This conversation is just like a general advice to many of the audience. But the first advice we know we often give to our client is check your lease. Get a copy of the lease out and see which what type of lease it is. We commonly see that in New Zealand, um, most of the lease has been signed based on the ADRS form. And if your lease is ADRS lease in it's a 2012 edition, um, after you know it's a 2012 afterwards edition, then you may have a clause in the lease says um, no access in emergency. So if you have that 27.5 no access in emergency clause, the next step is um, we can have a look what that clause says. That clause basically applies in the situation where there's a public emergency situation arise and the tenants cannot as unable to access to their premises due to those events and not able fully to conduct their business, then this clause um, will trigger. If we have that clause, then um, if that event happens, that clause provides a fair portion, a fair portion of the rent can be ceased payable. See, fair portion of the rent and outgoings can be ceased payable by the tenant. So once our, our client has seen that clause, next question come up is, how do you, what do you mean by fair portion? What percentage it is? How do you calculate it? There's, unfortunately, there's no defined meaning of fair portion in the ADLS lease. It's been left um, not defined on purpose because tenants landlord situation is different. Therefore, that fair portion is something that needs to be interpreted based on the three aspects. One is the lease, how long you have the lease for, how long it's going for, what the rental is. Secondly, it's about commercial things from the commercial aspects. What kind of business is the tenants doing in their premises? Are they running the premises as an office or retail, restaurant, bar, or they're using the premises as a storage place, a storage warehouse, or perhaps they are conducting essential service from that premises. So you need to look at commercially, what does tenant do and how much financial commercial impact they have been suffered as a result of lockdown. And thirdly, is ethical, from an ethical perspective. So um, by meaning ethical is often we, we see that during this very difficult time, it's not all about what legal right you have. It's more about what consequence, what ethical consequence that legal you know, enforcement will result to. 
the both parties interact in really good phase to ethically reach an agreement. So that's what we suggest tenants and landlords to look at about their, ten about their lease from those three aspects. Then come to discuss about what is a fair portion. After two, then the reason of that inclusion of that new clause to the ADS form is because in 2012, we had um, shortly after the um, earthquake, Christchurch earthquake, a lot of the red zone um, business owners, because of the earthquake um, red zone, they can't access and conduct their business. Therefore, there was a lot of um, comments about having this kind of clause, a clause that address this special emergency situation. So after that has been included for seven and a half years, they hadn't, there's no such event actually trigger of using that clause. So there's no case law at, at the moment um, about how you interpret a fair portion. But we have seen that, um, that in the situation of clause 27.3, where the premises has been partly damaged or destroyed, then um, the tenants can't access or unable to access to come fully conduct their business. We've seen some case law um, being addressed in relation to that kind of um, situation. In particular, there was a case, um, 2015, high court case about um, a restaurant, a bar restaurant, that their business has been affected because of the um, scaffolding has been set up, blocking their appearance, the restaurant's um, appearance which they suffered um, loss of, um, they have been interrupted by business running and suffered of loss. In that particular case, um, the court has think that the, due to the scaffolding and the um, interruptions has caused to the tenant um, that the fair portion, um, which that they can claim for cease of pay of rental and outgoings should be 100%, of that two months, which is that duration, they, they had a business interruption, duration of the, um, that they had 100% of the rent abatement. So we have seen cases where court look at the nature of the business, the amount of the interruptions they have, um, and apply 100% um, rental abatement to this situation. But we're not saying that it will be the same rule applies to clause 27.5 um, application because each business is slightly different. But we suggest um, they're not in tenants to negotiate and come to discuss in a good face, look at those aspects and see what is reasonable, what is fair for both parties to agree on. And anything that parties agreed on, we strongly recommend and must be recorded in writing. Because the least thing you want is you want to have a telephone conversation with your landlord or tenant, agreed on something, but something that you, you know, misunderstood um hasn't or not in, not recorded in details and arise any other future disputes about how long the discount will apply for how much it is and um etc so we definitely um recommend in writing to record these um this information between landlord and the tenant um and often of and also that um, for, for lease that without, is not on the ADIS form, um, tenants and the landlord, basically that in our view, if the clause of the lease doesn't have that clause, so basically that tenants do have obligation to meet the rent payment, but um, we think given this current situation, and we, we think it's still fair for the tenants to propose, um, with, discuss with your landlord, See whether the landlord would agree on something that is um, acceptable for both parties. Because from the landlord perspective, um, it's also important to have a tenant in place and um, trading solvently. So um, get through that you know, difficult time and um, have a less impact on the economy. So I think easily that um, it doesn't stop both parties to negotiate. And there's other... Um, for a lease that doesn't have that clause 27.5, there's other possibilities um, looking at the, um, if there's any force majeure clause or any, um, or if there's not, then maybe look at a lot of the frustration which applies in the situation that fundamental um, change of um, the purpose of the contract. So there's other revenues that we can help clients to look at 
to see what other legal remedies they may have and how they can strategize their negotiation uh, with tenants or with the landlord and to um, achieve a desirable result for the parties. Right. Yeah. Um, thank you, Joy. Um, I think a lot of a lot of business uh, like mine, um, we are affected um, by the lockdown, but we can still kind of do some kind of work. Not like a restaurant that completely shut, or like a storage uh, business yeah. that uh, there's no impact, or a pharmacy is no impact. A lot of us are kind of uh, fit in the middle, and uh, it's good and bad because it's good that uh, we can potentially, you know, get some reduced um, uh, rent to. To pay um, but on the other side you know uh, a lot of people not really comfortable you know confront these kind of negotiation and maybe no clue uh, how to negotiation so is this something that yourself or your firm uh, can help you out? yes great definitely we have a very um, good commercial team with Turner Hopkins and our, our lawyers is very very happy to assist with our clients either your landlord or your tenant assess you with this um, in this situation we can act on our behalf and to um, enter into negotiation with the other side and um, also I think the role of us is to provide a very practical practical advice to our, to our clients and to to help both parties reach a good ag arrangement you know of what is um, acceptable for both parties so our role um, as long as, as as well as a, as a lawyer for you, but also that helping you to um, get a practical resolution, I think it's really important. We're very happy to represent for any of the tenants or any of the landlord to um, conduct this yeah conversation. Great, uh, Joy. Final question: Some people they are commercial landlord, so in this situation, uh, if their tenants refuse to pay, or um, you know they're trying to negotiate, um, I guess a lot of uh, things that um, you talked about earlier are still apply to landlord. But there's any additional kind of advice you want to give to commercial landlord in this situation? Yeah. So um, I know that a lot of people are asking questions. If the tenant sent a landlord a letter say we're not going to pay the rent, whether the tenant can do that. So my answer to the landlord is um, no, they can't. It has to be agreed. It has to be mutually agreed arrangement. It can't be just one way from tenant saying they're not going to pay. It's not, they can't do that. And the lease, they're still obliged to pay the rental if there's no agreement being reached about rent abatement. Um, but secondly, that I urge the landlord to also look at you know, um, practical perspective about the lease situation, about their own situation, whether they have a mortgage to pay, whether there's a financially, you know, based on living those rental, is their living, living um, their basis for the living as well. So look at, you know, different environment and um, different perspective, then um, have a good negotiation with the tenants. As Connie said, if the business is a base, a warehouse or um, they can't be qualified for that statement in this situation because their financial situation hasn't been impacted. And um, and a lot of landlord also that, um, and a lot of business also they can't fully, you know, conduct from the premises, but um, they working remotely um, aspects as well. And so there's still some aspects and I think there's some negotiation room for the parties to do. So yeah, I think um, look at the lease, look at the three aspects that we discussed, talk to your legal advisors and um, structure an acceptable solution. And we often think that um, something to keep in mind for both parties is about a long-term relationship. So we say that tenant landlord is a long-term relationship. It's not just about one month rent holiday, rent abatement for the lockdown period, but it's about um, you know, helping each other out during this difficult time to reach a mutual win-win situation to both minimize the losses for both parties. So um, I'm sure whatever you um, given the other side would be appreciated as well. And that's enhancing of that long-term relationship purpose. Excellent. Thank you, Jai. Um, in some people's uh, mind, probably kind of more cost if I get uh, legal assistance. If you can get experts' help, 
you know, one is you can get the, potentially get uh, the rent to be reduced. And secondly, it's uh, much less stress. And I think more importantly is the intangible part, which is still keep uh, the good relationship with your landlord or tenants. Um, yeah, I would say best advice to contact expert in this case as um, the commercial lawyer, like Joy uh, herself or, or her colleague in the Turner Hopkins. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joy. It's great. really great. It gave me myself also peace of mind and I know what I supposed to do after this video. <laughs> so thank you so much. And, <laughs> Okay. Um, if you have uh, family friends um, who are also business owner, I think uh, they're really desperate to want to watch this video um, as well and get onto it ASAP. So thanks for uh, sharing uh, if you can. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much, Connie. My pleasure. Bye for now. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.